bring in David Harrow this morning uh, of Harris Associates CIO, talk about international equities, uh, portfolio manager there. David, it's great to see you again. I wonder how you are processing uh, all of what's happening on the other side of the planet into your model about what to do internationally. Well, what we've continued to see is these geopolitical events really do have a shock impact on share prices. And our view is, as long-term investors at Harris Oakmark, is to value companies not on this week, next month, next quarter, but in the next three, five, ten years. This is the, fundamental, the fundamentals of company valuation. And when you have these extreme price reactions, which we've seen incidentally in the last three or four months, particularly in Europe, it actually becomes an opportunity to buy quality at low price, which is the essence of value investing, trying to buy good businesses at low prices. And normally you don't get this opportunity unless you do have a shock. So we view this as an opportunistic uh, subset that we could take advantage of given our investment time horizon of three to five years. So it, it makes value stocks even more valuable, valuable, I guess, in your view. What about how you think about international exposures around geopolitics? You know, we, we look at supply chains differently right now. There's this idea of friend shoring. Does it make you rethink allocations in places like China? We saw what happened with Russia and increase exposure to places that are friendlier, like Europe. This is definitely happening that we're seeing like French shoring. Yes, it's a good term, but it's just called diversifying your supply chain, not putting all your eggs in one basket. And this is a slow and it will be a continual process. I think there was too much of an emphasis on using China as a supply chain, a base of manufacturing. And I think people got kind of caught uh, with this. And I think they're now doing the more rational thing in terms of diversifying their supply chain. But this doesn't at all alter how we invest. We look at company by company fundamentals, and we look at a company's ability to earn cash flow streams. And one of the things that is the big misnomer is say a company that's based somewhere, say Germany or Europe, uh, should be punished because of its zip code or where it's based and not where it actually conducts business. So we focus on where the company conducts business, and if we could get a good, quality business at a low price, that price is being severely impacted by its zip code, I think this is a great investment opportunity. And we've seen over the last 10 years, international's been out of favor, value's been out of favor, international value, this is our, our, our fishing ground, has been out of favor. This actually is a bullish, a very bullish time period for us. It reminds me of uh, your call, was it last week, where we downgraded uh, UK? Yeah. We did get some CPI numbers out of UK right. today. It's still a little sticky at uh, half a point. Right, right. does look like yeah, we're near, near, near the ends of inflation rate hikes over there, though. So, yeah. Look, I would just kind of come back and say in response, I think that all makes sense. We've been talking about global supply chain diversification for some time right now. And, you know, there are many moving parts to this, but it underscores my perspective anyway that, you know, it continues quite bullish on the U.S. industrial economy. And I, I, I think, again, we talk about broadening within the U.S. equity markets away from this mega cap growth influence, and that's, that's where we're putting our focus. On industrials. Yeah, go ahead, David. Yeah, well, I would say what's interesting is the U.S. is the biggest economy in the world, to almost 25 percent of global GDP. These companies located outside the U.S. are huge beneficiaries of U.S. growth. And what we've seen is when the U.S. reports a strong growth number, the dollar strengthens and the foreign stocks weaken. What should actually happen is that the dollar, as it strengthens, should strengthen the local market share prices because most of these multinationals benefit from this. As a result of this reaction, you see, for instance, Germany trades at 10 times earnings. The U.S. trades at 19 times earnings. And to me, there's a huge opportunity here, especially when you look at earnings yields compared to bond yields, where the, you know, the German 10 years below three and the U.S. 10 years pushing five. So you have a, a German P.E. ratio of 10 and a bond rate below three versus S&P, which is at 19 or a 5 percent earnings yield versus a bond rate, which is almost the same.